Hi everyone, this is Luxtos, and today I'm bringing you a class guide for Assassination Rogue. We'll be covering talents, stats priority, trinkets, azurite traits, race, rotations, and macro. So if you're ready, let's get right into it. We're now gonna be talking about talents. Before we get started into any cookie cutter builds, uh, I want to tell you that you need to sim yourself. Use raid bots, ask Mr. Robot, simulation craft, any tools you want to sim your own characters and figure out which are the best talent for you. This information might change in a week, in a month. We never know what's going to happen with a balancing patch, so make sure to sim yourself. Right now, though, there is some cookie cutter builds that you can use, so let's go over it real quick. In the first row, you're going to be picking Elaborate Planning. It's currently simming highest for low and high gear sets. So uh, currently, this is the best option with uh, with uh, with the simulation. Uh, on the second row, you're going to be using Subterfuge. It, it currently increased the damage of Garot so much that it's uh, it's 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 one of the best option. Night Stalker and Master Assassin are not strong enough to compete with Subterfuge in both a single target and AOE. Same thing for Vigor, so you're going to choose Vigor for single target and AoE. It's going to be better than Deeper Stratagem and Mark for Dead in those situations. Of course, this is a PvE guide, so you might want to pick Mark for Dead for PvP or pick any other options, but this is for single target and AoE for PvE Assassination Rogue. This row is going to be uh, is going to be optional, right? So it depends on your play style. I don't recommend elusiveness unless you know there is some very specific damage that is going to um, come very often and that you need to avoid. Otherwise, it's going to kill you. Um, there could be some situation like that, but usually elusiveness is for PvP. Um, I recommend that you run cheat death. It's going to save you from dying. In, uh, in a lot of those situations, but you need to remember that it has a six minute cooldown. And Leeching Poison can be good if you're doing content that doesn't uh, have any mechanics that can kill you very easily. So it can help uh, sustain your, your HP and help your healer out, right? So on the last, uh, on this row, this is also an optional row. Uh, the only DPS option right there. Are going to be internal bleeding and prey on the weak. So if you need to CC any ads uh, and focus them down or interrupts with with CC right, prey on the weak and internal bleeding are going to give you the best DPS option. Uh, Iron wire could be useful if you really need to silence a lot of ads, like maybe in shrine or something like that. But uh, because there's a lot of casters, and so that could be useful. Other than that. Uh, Go for uh, go for what's uh, what's soothing your uh, your needs, right? So, if you have a lot of CC that you can interrupt, I would go maybe with Iron Wire. If you need to stun to interrupt stuff and you don't want to lose too much DPS, then Internal Bleeding can be good. If you're focusing ads and they need to die very quickly, all of your teams are focusing on the same target and Mythic Plus, for example, then Prey on the Week can be useful also. Uh, the 90 talent row is going to be between Toxic Blade and Exsanguinate. At the start of the expansion with lower uh, lower item level build, Toxic Blade was simming ire, but the more gear people got, the more Exsanguinate became uh, became even better. So right now, Exsanguinate is simming ire for, uh, for a lot of rogues, so I recommend going with the uh, Exsanguinate build, but you want to sim yourself. See if Toxic Blade might be better for you at your gear point. Uh, it's all, it's all going to depend on that. Currently, Venom Rush is not even close to those, so use any of those abilities. Uh, for the last row, this is where your AoE versus single target build is going to come in, right? So, Hidden Blade and Crimson Tempest are both the, uh, the AoE side of things uh, because those are not really going to be used in single target rotation, at least not as much. And Poison Bomb is the only talent that is really good for single target, but also can be good for AoE, especially if you're lucky. Um, so for single target, you're going to go with Poison Bomb. And what I recommend that you do is that for AoE situation in Mythic Plus, for example, like right now, it's currently a Tyrannical Week. So Poison Bomb is going to be very good because you're going to be uh, spending a lot of times on bosses. But you're also going to be using it for uh, some AoE on trash. So this is a good, well-rounded talent. 
Uh, you can also go for Crimson Tempest if you wish, uh, if you wish so. So if the ads are gonna last a long time, this might be a good DPS increase for you. If, if for example, it is a fortified week, so the ads are going to stay a long time. So you might want to sim yourself out. I recommend that you do some, um, some simming on a Wii rotation. See if Crimson Tempest is going to, to give you more DPS, but that's going to be a big single target DPS loss if you don't have Poison Bomb. So that's up to you. If you need Trash DPS or Boss DPS, I really recommend going with Poison Bomb for Mythic Plus, though. It's really, really good. So that's going to be it for Talent. These are going to be your setup for both uh, single target and AoE rotation. The only one that can change will be the last row for single target and AoE. So just choose, choose whichever one you prefer. So now we're going to be talking about stats priority. Uh, stats priority for Assassination Road is pretty straightforward, but you need to figure out what kind of content you want to do, right? So currently I'm using a website called Raven Alt. Uh, this is built by a pretty good rogue from the, the rogue community, and they're also on Discord with a lot of information. You can ask any question, people will answer you, and that's a, that's a very good community. Uh, right now they have a cookie cutter... Um, stats priority system listed out right there so for single target it's going to be agility aced critical strike for multi-target it's going to be agility crit and mastery as you can see crit is pretty high on both of those so if you do very um like mythic plus content which has a lot of boss damage and a lot of trash damage which means multi-target damage crit is going to be very good for you if you want to push that single target damage on boss in raids or on tyrannical weeks, then ace is going to be your go-to uh, go to stats. What I recommend that you do is that you use a website called Raid Bots. Uh, this is going to al allow you to sim your characters, right? So in game, you need an add-on called Simulation Craft or Sim C, uh, right there, Simulation Craft. And then in game, you type slash Sim C once that's installed, and you can get your characters stats or information about gear talents everything click ok make sure you copy it go back into Raybots stats weight paste that in here you can leave everything by default smart sim patchwork patchwork is going to be single target mostly uh you do number of boss one four to five minutes so raid boss are usually five to six minutes uh mythic plus boss can be three to four so check that out you can do blood loss or remove it depending on what you want to sim yourself for right so we're gonna go with blood loss and we're gonna generate stats weight this is gonna be uh the stats weight for my character so currently i'm not itemized for assassination so it might give some uh weird uh weird output but we'll see what it gives you and then i'm gonna show you how to import it into the game to figure out what piece is an upgrade for your rogue using an add-on called pawn there you go generating report okay so for my rogue right now weapon uh weapon dps is going to be the best and i'm seriously lacking ace i'm lacking so much ace that it's simming iron and agility for me currently okay so i really need to get more ace on my rogue what i do is there is something called pawn string in here you click copy the clipboard you installed the add-on that i just talked to you about called pawn and then in your character's info, you can click on this little thing right there. You go into skill, import, paste that in. Okay, there you go. You now have your pawn string for assassination single target. So if I mouse over any of my piece of gear on this character, uh, I can see that this is going to be a 5% uh, upgrade on the previous piece. Even though it has lower item level, this doesn't have any ace. And currently ace is simming very high. So I might want to check that out. This is going to be a huge increase in, in, in stats versus my other cloak, even though it's lower item level also. So I might need to check that out and see which piece of gear I need to change. Of course, just like I told you, you need to sim yourself. So you can also sim your character using uh, Ectic Ad Cleave. But if you want to simulate a trash pack, what I recommend that you do is you leave it at patchwork. You do four or five boss and then you do one minute fight, right? So you do like five bosses, remove blood loss, and have it do a one minute fight. This is going to simulate, uh, you're gonna use cooldown, of course, the uh, the 
the rape bots is going to use your vendetta and all that stuff so that might change a bit but vendetta is solo cooldown that sometimes you can use it on priority trash if a boss is not uh near you in a two minute uh, window right so make sure you check out the number of boss one minute and then you can generate stats weight this should give you a very good approximation on what stats weight you want for mythic trash okay so you can import both of those string and compare what kind of gear you're looking for i recommend that you might want to gem and enchant for crit if you want to do all well around in mythic plus and everything so you might want to gem a bit of ace uh, and crit depending on if you want to do mostly boss uh boss damage or trash damage right so this is going to be it for stats priority for assassination rogue so we're going to be talking about trinkets, Azerite traits, and races option. I use a website called Blood Mallet that uh, gives a lot of information that are based on simulation. So this information is very accurate, but you still need to take it with a grain of salt, right? So you still need to inform yourself with a uh, website, Discord, uh, maybe ask some good players and see what's good. But usually, this website will have very accurate information, especially for trinkets and races. And as a right trait is maybe where uh, where we can uh, we can have some uh, some more information that we can gather with because it changed a lot uh, the rotation, especially for the assassination rogue. So let's get started, right? So for trinkets, if you go on Blood Mallet, the, the website will be down below in the description. As always, uh, you can have information for every single class and spec in the game. DPS spec, of course. Uh, so you're going to go into Rogue Assassination and you're going to go into Trinkets. Uh, right now, so it's comparing all of the Trinkets for every single item level. So you can see which one uh, is the best for you. But you need to take it... You need to read what Trinket does, right? So this one place... Uh, so I've talked about that in previous Rogue video, but I want to reiterate on it. Uh, this one place a ward on the ground, granting you a lot of haste. Uh, this is going to be one of your best trinket, especially if you can get it at very high item level. Uh, maybe not 400, but 370 could be uh, could be something pretty doable. So the green bar is going to be the representing uh, 370 trinkets, right? And uh, so that trinket is going to be very good if you're standing in it. So if you're doing a fight in Mythic Plus or in raids where you need to move a lot and you misuse this trinket then it's not going to be your best DPS trinket, right? So if you use the trinket on cooldown and never move out of it, it's going to yield you the most damage. But if you don't use it on cooldown because the fight is always moving, uh, there is always stuff moving around and you're not able to have a good full uh, 10 seconds standing in the ward, or you use it and then you have to move out of it, then it's going to be not as good as this trinket. Because this trinket is just an on-use. You use it, you use it with Vendetta, you crit a lot, you do a lot of damage, right? So the DPS difference is pretty good, but that's considering you use this trinket on cooldown and you don't move out of it for the full 10 seconds. Otherwise, this is not accurate, right? So just make sure you check uh, those trinket and take that into consideration. So if you can do a full use of it and use it, properly it's going to be a very good trinket so make sure you check that out make sure you check if you have the proper uh the proper um, item level and then compare which one you want to choose so those are all very good option right there for azerite trait uh this is where it gets a little tricky it's actually pretty straightforward a shrouded uh suffocation is one of the best trait you can get for your assassination rogue it's very very good and it's so good that it it even changes your rotation a lot, allowing you to do less mutilate and more garrote in the opener, and that's pretty that's pretty good. So it, it changes a lot the opener, and it, it increases your damage by a lot. So I really recommend that you try to get at least one. Um, if you get at least one, then you can do the shrouded uh, suffocation opener, and it's it's better, right? So at least one, but you can stack them and uh, eventually you can see even how much DPS it's going to yield you if you have one, two, or three of those. Uh, Sharpened Blade is good, Double Dose, Thunder Blast. So these have all been updated. So uh, this has been like six hours ago. Uh, so you can check those out. And I just discovered something pretty cool. So there's an add-on called Azerite Power Weights. So if I move my head around, Azerite Power Weights, okay? 
You can come in here, click on Azerite Trade Weights. It's going to copy it. Install the add-on Azerite Power Rates. Power Weights, sorry. And when you go in here, you can click Import and paste that string in. Accept. There you go. It's going to import the value of all those trades and it's going to give you a value score on your on this right there. So as you can see right now, uh, if I do, so if I go in here, I do use this skill, show and tooltip, there you go. So it's gonna give me a score on all of the icons, right? So I know that Garot is better than this one. I know that this one is better than this one, but I should have picked this one. So apparently this is better for uh, pure raw DPS, right? You even get a score for uh, every item. So if you mouse over, it's going to let you know what's the score for every trait right there at the bottom. So this is a very useful add-on. You don't have to come back every single time to Blood Mallet. Um, but it, it, it's a very, very good add-on. So I really recommend it. So uh, that that's it pretty much for Azerite trait. You can check, of course, if you want to know for the, the, the second ring. And you can also check it out for Ectic and Cleave because... Uh, of course, it's 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 going to be a little different for AoE, so you might want to balance those. If you're doing a lot of Mythic Plus or, or things like that, you might not want to go for full. Uh, I really recommend that you at least get one of these, even for AoE, and then you can get some, uh, some of these if you want to do some nice AoE cleave damage and Mythic Plus, but that's up to you, right? Uh, races, it, it really doesn't matter, right? So it's not even like it's 300. DPS difference between a Night Elf and a Nightborn, right? And that's probably a Night Elf uh, with the Ace, not the Crit. So, I mean, it's really up to you. Um, to be honest, this is... Don't just go Night Elf because the, the simulation tells you that Night Elf deals more DPS, right? Night Elf gives you 300 more DPS. That is true. But this doesn't account for... Stun reduction on Orc or removing a stun as a human, right? This is not accounted for in a, a simulation. So if you do a simulation of your character, you're never going to get stunned. But if you're doing, for example, Toldegar and you do the Worgen boss and he stuns all of you and you're a human rogue, you can shrink it out of it or not shrink it, but every man for himself out of it and keep doing DPS. That's going to be a lot more than 300 DPS. Let me tell you that. So those are not going to be taken into account. Um, Blood Elf are very good right now because there's a lot of stuff that you need to dispel in Mythic Plus. Um, if you can get out of roots with... Like, you just you just got to pick one that suits your need and pick ones for either the look or either the utilities. Really, that's all it comes down to. Uh, so I recommend that you go for utilities mostly over pure raw DPS. Of course, Night Elf can do some cool stuff with uh, Shadow Meld. It doesn't really work during a boss fight, but during trash, you can Shadow Meld, get back into stealth, and do another full uh, Garot opener. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So Night Elf, Night Elf is very good, especially for uh, Assassination Row because of that subterfuge Garot gameplay. So that's going to be it for Trinket, Azerite, and Race Choices. So now we're going to be talking about the Assassination Rogue rotation and opener. Before we get into it, I want to cover some basic talents and information for the Rogue. Uh, so your mastery is increasing the damage of your poison and your bleed. So make sure you are aware of that. Uh, make sure you have your poison active at all time because you're not going to do any damage, right? The reason for that is a passive called Venomous Wound. Uh, every time Garrote, Rupture, or Internal Bleeding uh, does damage on a target that is affected by your poison, you're going to generate 7 energy. So if you don't have Bleeds out and you don't have your poison out, you're not going to generate any energy. And you're going to be starving and you're going to be doing crappy DPS, right? So this is really important. Uh, the other thing that you need to know is Seal of Fate. Seal of Fate is that... Every time you deal a critical strike with an ability that does generate at least a combo point, right? So every time you do a critical strike with Garot, uh, sorry, not Garot, but Mutilate or Fan of My, for example, you have a chance of uh, generating more combo points. Garot is not going to do any damage, right? So it's not going to do any... Um, 
initial damage. It's going to be a blade, so you cannot crit with Garou, right? Every tick can crit, but the the main ability cannot crit, so it's always going to generate one combo point. Uh, but Mutilate is generating two combo point, and it's doing two attack at the same time. Meaning, if any of those attack crits, it's going to generate three combo points, and if both of them crit, it's going to generate four combo points. So Mutilate is always going to be two or four. But you're always going to take into account that it's going to be two minimum. So that means you're going to be using your Spender and Venom and Rupture at four combo points minimum you never want to mutilate at four combo point because you're going to overcap for sure but you want to mutilate at three combo points even though you could overcap potentially if you crit you still want to use mutilate at three combo point so if you use mutilate and you get two none of your attack crits you do it again you do it again you don't crit on any of them again you are at four you're gonna be using a spender and you go and you go at it again so no crit double mutilate Double mutilate, spender, right? So if you don't have a lot of crit, that's going to happen often. If you have a lot of critical strike, you might get some mutilate that are going to generate four combo point and allow you to use a spender right away. If you're using deeper stratagem, which I don't recommend that you do right now, but if you are, uh, it's going to be five and six combo points. So it's just one combo point uh, fewer than your maximum combo point, uh, so you can use a finisher. Uh, for AoE, you're going to be using Fan of Knife, which is going to apply Deadly Poison to all targets. But it's also every single target that you get a crit on, you'll generate an extra combo point, right? So you can potentially, with a lot of crit, get a lot of combo points very, very quickly with that tool. So those are going to be your three abilities that generate the most combo points. Of course, Blindside, if you ever pick it, is going to generate one, and Toxic Blade uh, is also going to generate a combo point. Uh, with the Azerite trait, a Shrouded Suffocation, your Garrote from Stealth are going to generate two additional combo points. This is very good, meaning that in your opener, you're going to have three combo points. So when we talk about the opener later, you're going to see how this is going to affect things. But this is going to change the way that your road works with combo point, And it's going to change a lot of things on your opener. So let's go right into that, shall we? So we're now going to cover the opener sequence for the best opener with Exsanguinate and the Azerite trait Shrouded Suffocation, right? So this is going to yield you with the most damage, and it's currently the best build around. Okay, so there is a lot of openers that you can do. Uh, this website covers them all, so it's ravenult.net. So if you ever want to come back to this in a text format, these are going to be updated and kept up to date, but I'm still going to go over them in video format so you can, uh, you can see how that works, right? Uh, so... This is the rotation that we're going to do. This is the opener that we're going to do. So th this is the Exsanguinate and Shrouded Suffocation. You need to at least have one or more trait, uh, Azerite trait, in order for this to work. Uh, the way this is going to work is in your opener, you're going to Garot, Rupture, Garot. And then you're going to Vendetta, Mutilate, Rupture, right? So this is going to cast your first Garot with three combo points. Then you're going to Rupture with three combo points. This is going to give you another three combo points, and it's going to Pandemic and keep updating the Empowered Garot. So then you can Vendetta Mutilate Rupture. This is going to apply a five combo point Rupture, right? And then you Exsanguinate. So this is going to make all current active bleed bleed out faster, right? So your Empowered Garot, that is Pandemic, is going to bleed out faster, which is going to result in higher burst DPS, and your 5-second combo point rupture is also going to get empowered with the Exsanguinate and Burnout faster, right? So once that's done, what you do is you will Mutilate and you will cast Envenom at 4 or more combo points and repeat that again. Uh, you might be able to do it one more time before your Garot runs out. Then you'll be able to Vanish Garot twice and... That's going to award you with full combo point, and that's going to reapply your Garot with full uh, pandemic empowered effect, right? So usually you would vanish with Garot about to run out so that you get empowered. But since Garot now gives you three combo points with the Azerite trait, 
uh, this is going to uh, pandemic it and empower it by itself. So you can wait for uh, this. You can wait for this to um, to run out. You can wait for it to run out. Then you apply it twice with vanish, and then your rupture should be about to fall off. Let it fall off from the uh, exsanguinate, and then reapply it with your regular rotation. Right. So we're going to be covering this rotation live right now. So remember, garrote, rupture, garrote, vendetta, mutilate, rupture. Then you go into the rest, right? So we're going to go in stealth. We're going to pop a pre-bot, right? Garrote, rupture, garrote, vendetta, mutilate, rupture, exsanguinate, one mutilate, two mutilate, and venom, one mutilate, two mutilate, and venom, one mutilate, two mutilate, and Venom, and then I can Vanish, Garrote, and Garrote. There you go. And then Rupture is falling off, reapply it, and there we go with the regular rotation. So, depending on gear and luck, everything should line up properly. So, I had time to do three full um, and Venom in my Vendetta window, and then uh, the Empowered Exsanguinate Garrote fell off. I Vanish, and you Garrote twice. Even if you don't have the energy for it, Subterfuge should last long enough for you to do two full uh, Garrote, which will lead you to have five combo points. Then Rupture is going to fall off, and you can reapply it again and keep going with your normal rotation. So then you just build and spend with Mutilate uh, and Venom, Rupture, and Garrote, just like you would do normally, right? So that was the opener for Exsanguinate and one stack of Shrouded Suffocation. So we're now going to cover the opener sequence for Exsanguinate without any trade. So if you have not been lucky and you don't have any piece that has the Shrouded Suffocation trait, we're going to cover that rotation. So it's going to change a little. You're not going to double Garou when you vanish or when you come out of stealth. You're going to go for a more regular uh, Legion style of rotation, right? So you're going to go into Garot Mutilate Rupture to get that three combo point at least on your first Rupture to make sure it pandemics well. And uh, then you're going to Vendetta Mutilate Rupture. Then you're going to Vanish Garot, then Exsanguinate, right? So it's going to be a little different, but uh, it's going to yield it's going to yield some good DPS. But it's, it's, it's going to be less, of course, than with Shrouded Suffocation. But this is going to work still. So remember, you Garot Mutilate Rupture to get that three combo point minimum on Rupture. Then you Vendetta Mutilate Rupture. Then you Vanish Garot. And then you Exsanguinate. Not before, right? So you go in Stealth, Pre-Pot, Garot, Mutilate, Rupture, Vendetta, Mutilate, Mutilate, Rupture, Vanish, Garot, Exsanguinate. And then you go into your normal rotation. So Mutilate, Mutilate, and Venom. Mutilate. Mutilate and Venom. And then you let those bleeds fall out because they're empowered and you don't want to uh, lose that good ticking DPS, right? So as soon as they fall out, you can reapply Garot and you can reapply your Rupture using your regular DPS rotation. So that's pretty straightforward. It's uh, it's 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 It might be a little bit more simple because it, it's not using some weird gimmicks like double Garot and stuff that we're maybe not used to. But... Um, so this is going to be it until you can get your hand on some Shrouded Suffocation as a right trade. We are now going to cover the basic single target rotation for Toxic Blade with at least one trait into Shrouded Suffocation. So this is very straightforward. Just like the Exsanguinate, you're going to start with Garot, Rupture, Garot. But then the difference is that you're going to go straight away into Vendetta Toxic Blade. And then you're going to spam and Venom into your Toxic Blade for as, as long as you can, right? Before you have to refresh your uh, before you have to refresh your Rupture. And then as soon as Garrot runs out, right? As soon as Garrot runs out, you want to Vanish and cast it twice. You let it fall out again because Vanishing and casting double Garrot into your Subterfuge is going to empower it and Pandemic by itself. So you don't need to continue uh, the duration of the, of the old one, right? So we're going to go into Garot, Rupture, Garot, Vendetta, Toxic Blade, and Venom Spam. Pretty straightforward. You go into Stealth, Pre-Bot, Garot, Rupture, Garot, Vendetta, Toxic Blade, and Venom. And then you go into End Venom Spam. As many as you can into the Toxic Blade duration. That's the important part, right? 
You want to get as many, and I'm not going to be able to get a, a last one. Refresh, rupture, and then we wait for Garou to fall off, right? That's all we do. So we can get one more Invenom, build some energy, wait for it to fall off. Vanish, Garou, Garou. And then you go back into your normal rotation, right? So Toxic Blade is back up, so you're going to go ahead and keep going with that. Try to do as many Invenom as you can into the window. Make sure you refresh Rupture before using Toxic Blade so that you don't waste the GCD and you don't waste Combo Point refreshing Rupture during Toxic Blade. That's very important. You want to do at least two good uh, big and Venom into that Toxic Blade if you want to do uh, as much damage as you can. So that's going to be it for the Toxic Blade Shrouded Suffocation opener sequence. So now we're going to talk about the Toxic Blade without Suffered Suffocation opener sequence. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. It's also, uh, it, it looks a lot like Legion uh, rotation opener style. So you're going to start with a Garot that is going to award you only one combo point because you don't have uh, Shrouded Suffocation. Then you're going to go into Mutilate until four combo points and you're going to do a Rupture. Uh, the reason we go until four instead of um, simply going with a, a three combo points rupture is that we're not going to pandemic it yet. We're going to go for the full opener before that. So as soon as you have your four uh, combo point rupture up, so four or more if you ever get lucky, um, you're going to go into Vendetta, Mutilate, Toxic Blade. And then you're going to spam as many Envenom as you can again into that Toxic Blade window. But uh, for this opener, you're going to vanish Garot when your Garot is going to hit Pandemic range with the Subterfuge, right? So that's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to go in Stealth. We're going to Pre-Pot, right? Pre-Pot, Garot, Mutilate, Rupture, Vendetta, Mutilate, Toxic Blade, Mutilate, Envenom, and then we're going to spam some Mutilate, right? And Envenom. And as soon as I hit Pandemic range, I want to go ahead and Vanish, Garot, and then we're going to go ahead and keep going with the rotation. We're going to refresh that Rupture. Normally, I should have uh, gotten it maybe a little faster if I was lucky enough with the, uh, the Pandemic effect on Rupture, but sometimes it's going to fall off if you don't have the energy for it. But um, that's, that's the way it is, right? So I got lucky in the opener. I only had to do one Mutilate. But you might have to do uh, uh, two mutilate. I only had to do one. So I did Garot and one mutilate, which crit and got me to four combo point. Then I was able to rupture. Then I did my Vendetta, mutilate, toxic blade. Then I was fewer than four combo points. So I had to mutilate one more time. Then end Venom, mutilate until four, end Venom, and then keep going until toxic blade runs out. Then Garot is going to fall off, vanish, refresh it. And then you're going to probably need to refresh your Rupture. And then you can keep going into your normal rotation. So that's going to be it for a Toxic Blade No Shrouded Suffocation build. So now we are going to cover the AoE rotation or the Cleave rotation for Assassination Rogue. Uh, it is actually pretty straightforward. So if you're using Crimson Tempest, you want to cast it. And you want to refresh it when there is two seconds remaining on the dot, right? If you're not using it, then simply wish and pray for Poison Bomb. Uh, you're going to garot target that are going to live long enough for it to matter. So don't waste your time uh, garroting like a uh, non-elite mob that might get cleaved down in a couple of seconds. That's going to be a waste. Usually what you want to do is in a pack where there is uh, maybe... Um, three or four elite mobs that are going to last for a good amount of time. From stealth, you want to apply as many Garot uh, that you can in the subterfuge, which is going to be three because of GCD. So you're going to be able to get out three empowered Garot on three different targets. So that's going to be pretty good. Then what you can do is apply uh, as many Rupture as you can. Uh, I don't recommend that you apply too many because you're uh, you're probably going to be over capping on energy anyway. But this is good to apply to two to three target that will live long enough. Uh, this is going to do a lot of damage, and then you can spam Envenom on your priority target, right? Uh, if you're using Exsanguinate, you can use Exsanguinate on your priority target. Um, that doesn't really matter. And if you're using Toxic Blade, you can use it on your priority target, right? 
So the opener would go as follow. Even if you're going to generate a lot of combo points from your growth, so I'm going to overcap on combo points, it does not matter. My goal here is to get out as many empowered Garot as possible, right? So in the opener, I can go ahead. So let's say that this is a, a pack of three elites, Bob. But this one needs to die faster, right? So we're going to go ahead and Garot, Garot, Garot. We're going to rupture this one, exsanguinate it, and then we're going to Vendetta it, maybe. And we can go ahead and spam Fan of Knife on three targets. So right now, I don't have a lot of crits, so my Fan of Knife spamming is not really good. But yeah, you get the point, right? So... The goal here is to go ahead and apply your Garot, your Empowered Garot, on three targets, okay? At least. Uh, well, you want to apply it to as many targets as you can, but the Subterfuge Garot is only going to be applied to three target maximum because of the short duration that Subterfuge has, right? Uh, if more targets comes into play, as soon as the cooldown of Garot's fades, you can keep applying it to target or simply refresh it. You're not going to be able to apply it to infinite amount of target uh, unless you vanish or do some tricks as a night elf with shadow mail and stuff like that. Then that's going to be very powerful. So as soon as that's done, you're going to apply uh, your rupture on as many target as you can. So if there is not like a priority target that needs to die very, very quickly, then you can take your time and apply the road, the road, the road, then you do rupture. Okay, then you spam fan of knife. Usually, if you have good enough crit, you're going to be able to uh, to apply it pretty quickly, but then it takes some time. So then you go back, you go back to this one, and you start spamming Envenom into it. That was the first target that you ruptured on, right? So you can go in here, reapply your Garot, keep spamming Fan of Mife, reapply Rupture, go on to that one, reapply Rupture, reapply Garot, go on to that one, there you go, reapply Rupture, and you keep going uh, in circle like that. If you want, you can then vanish, Garot, 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 and that's going to do a lot of damage. And you can exsanguinate that target, and there you go. So it's basically the same thing as single target, right? Except that you want to apply Rupture and Garot to as many targets as you can. You can exsanguinate one, Vendetta, doesn't matter. Uh, that's only if there's like a single target that needs to die very, very quickly. Uh, for example, with the Infest Seasonal Affix and Mythic Plus, that's going to be something you're going to be asked uh, to do a lot of the time. Rogues are very good at that. So with Vendetta and Exsanguinate, you're going to be able to burn single targets very, very quickly. Uh, so that's going to be your goal for airy rotation. It's not going to change much between Toxic Blade and Exsanguinate. You just want to try to get as many bleeds out as you can and keep doing Fan of Knife to generate combo points. So Fan of Knife is going to replace Mutilate at three targets or more. So if there is two targets, you want to keep spamming Mutilate if there is three targets or more, uh, Fan of Knife usually comes out on top. Uh, you're going to apply a lot more. Um, you're going to get a lot of energy from keeping your, your poison on multiple targets with all of them having bleeds. So that's going to be very good. So that's the AoE rotation for Assassination Rogue. So we'll now be talking about cooldown usage for Assassination Rogue. Outside of your opener sequence, uh, you want to use your cooldown effectively so that you can do maximum damage in your regular rotation, right? So for Assassination Rogue, your main cooldown is going to be Vendetta and Vanish. Uh, you want to try to pair those as often as possible. So Vendetta is going to increase your damage output by a lot and it's going to generate a lot of energy while Vanish is going to give you that good subterfuge damage. When I say as often as possible, even though both of them have a two-minute cooldown, uh, with Mythic, with Trash sometimes, it might happen that you want to use Vanish, but not necessarily use Vendetta because there is no priority target or something. So just figure it out, but usually you want them to align. Uh, don't wait for one or for the other. So uh, just Vanish as to wait for Vendetta, right? So don't use Vanish uh, in the middle of a fight if Vendetta is not out. Make sure you wait for Vendetta. Try to pair it as often as possible with Vendetta. But Vendetta does not wait for Vanish. So use Vendetta on cooldown, right? Uh, usually they will both line up pretty well on uh, on regular bosses because you use both in your opener. And then they're going to line up pretty well every two minutes during the fight, right? So then we are going to talk about Toxic Blade. So Toxic Blade need to be used on cooldown. 
but you need to pull energy before you use it. So you want to try to reach as maximum, cl as close to maximum energy as you can in order to do as many and venom as you can into the nine second window. So use this on the cooldown. Use Exsanguinate on cooldown also with freshly applied bleeds. So apply Rupture with high amounts of combo point, apply Garrote, and then use Exsanguinate. Of course, you're not always going to have uh, empowered subterfuge Garrote, but that's fine. Just use it on cooldown and you'll do, uh, you'll do good damage, right? So you're going to pre-pot before the fight and then you want to use your second pot with your Vendetta and Vanish that are going to line up two minutes after your opener. So that's going to be it for cooldown usage for Assassination Rogue. Let's talk about macros. Uh, there is not a lot of macros that I really recommend for Rogue. You've seen probably most of these if you've watched the Subtlety or Altla guide, right? Um, one of my favorite one is going to be this one, okay? So this is going to be uh, Toxic Blade and Exsanguinate in one single macro. Right now, you're almost never going to pick uh, Venom Rush, but uh, you can choose between Toxic Blade and Exsanguinate depending on your gear, depending if you're doing PvP or PvE, right? So this macro is going to put a condition whether if you have... So the first number is the number of row, and then the second one is the column, right? So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2. This is 6, 3, right? So if you pick Toxic Blade, the icon is going to change to Toxic Blade. And if you pick Exsanguinate, it's going to change to Exsanguinate. So you don't have to deal with that replacing icon every now and then. You can even put Trinkets, uh, Potion of Prolonged Power in here. You can do anything you want in that macro. And that, for me, is one of the most useful macro that I use for Assassination Rogue. I also use this one for all three specs. So it's going to cast Vendetta, Adrenaline Rush, or Shadow Blades, depending if you're spec 1 two or three one two or three so spec one is going to be vendetta spec two is going to be adrenaline rush and spec three is going to be shadow blade you can then also uh, macro in potion of prolonged power the agility potion anything you want in there so that's a very cool macro so you're going to be able to put it instead of having three different macros with the prolonged power in it so I really recommend that one uh, these are going to be just focus blind focus cheap shot uh, focus Kidney, Focus Kick, just really straightforward. Uh, they can be useful in PvE situation. Uh, like, like example, that last pack of ads in Shrine of the Storm before the last boss, there is two uh, tentacle monster, right? That needs to be interrupted. So you can put one on Focus, uh, DPS one, and uh, have you kick uh, the second ads without dropping your first target uh, and, and losing some DPS, right? So that's pretty useful for uh, those cases, and it's very good also for PvP, right? Stealth macro, I'm just using a stealth uh, and conceal macro, so I just do a shift modifier. So if I, pressed, if I press my bindings, it goes to stealth. If I shift press it, it goes uh, for shroud of concealment, right? So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, tricks of the trade modifier with uh, casting on focus, so I, I just put my tank I just put my tank on focus usually, and I trick him during uh, Mythic Plus and raids and all that stuff. Mouse over Shadow Step. So this is the only mouse over macro that I use. I don't recommend using mouse over macro uh, because you can you can not fuck them up, but you can do mistakes, and that can be bad. But Shadow Shadow Step is not as bad. So just just mouse over where you want to go, where you want to Shadow Step. That allows you to also do it on friendly target without losing dps like if you're you're doing dps around here and you want to move and shadow step to a friendly target that's going to be useful um that's for subtlety subtlety sorry sap so sap enemy so sap enemy is just a regular sap with focus sap and this one is for pvp only so don't use that in pve this is just going to clear target and try to find a new enemy player uh so that's going to be pretty much it for the macros for assassination rogue there's not much else that you need just get this one to be honest and the vendetta one and you're gonna be good to go okay so that is it for the assassination class guide video i hope you guys enjoyed it and i invite you to leave a comment down below what class would you like to see next so now we're done with rogue guide uh what class do you want to see next do you want me to do a guide for shaman death knight 
which class is going to be next. You guys are going to decide, or maybe not. I might choose my own classes. Who knows? Who knows, right? But take your chance. Leave a comment down below. Make sure you leave a like on this video. This helped me a lot. Uh, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my other videos. But mostly, please, I would really appreciate it. Just come watch me on Twitch. I record these video live and you, come, you can come watch me on Twitch. We're having a lot of fun with the community. We're having a great time and we can chat with each other. And it, it's very great. So they're watching me right now record this video and you can be part of it. So I invite you to do so. But until then, that was it. And good luck in BFA, guys.